everyone welcome back to the channel today i want to show you my 2025 ipad setup every year i do like to customize it change the wallpaper the lock screen the photos that i have um i'll maybe download new apps or get rid of some apps that i haven't used but i've basically reset my ipad it looks completely different than what I had in 2024. I will show you some of the apps that I use on a daily basis that helps me be productive. So let's get straight into the iPad tour. So I bought the iPad Pro 11 inch fourth generation about two years ago. It uses the M2 chip and it has 128 gigabytes. So let's talk about some of the accessories I bought for my iPad, starting off with this case from Target. It's from the Heyday brand. I got it in the color Black Saffiano. It's lightweight, it's durable, it folds into a kickstand, and it also has a built-in stylus holder, which I store my Apple Pencil. I really like this case. It gives me easy access to all the ports and buttons and features on the iPad. I also bought the Apple Pencil Pro, which makes it a little easier for me to draw, take notes, and mark up documents. Lastly, I have this iPad stand I got from Amazon. I use it to store my iPad when it's on my desk. It's lightweight, it's sturdy, it's compatible with a lot of other tablets, and it has adjustable angles. So this is what my home screen looks like. I got this image from Pinterest. Pinterest is a good place to find really cute wallpapers. No matter what your aesthetic is, you can search on there. You'll be able to find something and then download it and then set it as your wallpaper. To the left, I have a couple of widgets. So the top widget is a list of my reminders from the reminders app. Instead of signing in, clicking on the app, I can easily see it from the home screen. The first circular widget links to my Google Excel so I can easily see my budget or habit tracker. The second one is the weather app. And at the bottom there, you'll see my weekly schedule from the structured app, which I'll be discussing later on. So this is the layout of my home screen. It looks super colorful, I love it. I love all of the pictures that I have here, the different widgets. I got my background again from Pinterest and all of my apps are organized by different categories. As you can see, I have a lot of widgets here. I use Widgetsmith to customize them. Widgetsmith is a free app that lets you customize your iPad or iPhone's home screen and lock screen with different widgets. So this app allows you to create many widgets including photos, time, date, step counting, health, activity, battery, calendar, reminders, weather, air quality. I mean, there is just so many widgets that you can create. And you can customize all of them with different fonts, colors, um, styles. There are themes where you can choose from different backgrounds, tint colors, and borders. And you can unlock more features if you pay a monthly subscription. So once you're done creating your widget and customizing it in the Widgetsmith app, you can touch and hold anywhere on the home screen until your app starts to jiggle. Tap the plus sign at the top of the screen, scroll down and select the widget smith icon. I personally love the photo widgets. I have them in different sizes from small to extra large. And of course, I get all of my photos from Pinterest. To find my wallpaper, I just searched cool patterns, cool wallpapers, and then downloaded it. Let's take a look at my favorite apps to use, starting off with the Reminders app. So I like to use the Reminders app of course, to set reminders, I can create subtasks and attachments and set alerts based on time and location. Below my reminder widget, I like to use YouTube music to listen to music. It's completely free, which I like. Next to my music widget, I have a widget to display the battery life for my iPad and my Apple Pencil Pro. So I wanted my iPad to be a bit more organized this upcoming year. So I have all of my apps into their respective categories. I found it a bit difficult to locate my favorite apps, documents, or photos. So I think it looks better this way. My first folder is utilities, then entertainment, games, tools, social media, and then productivity. 
So taking a look at the productivity folder, my favorite app to use is GoodNotes. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to get an iPad. GoodNotes is a note-taking app that lets you take handwritten notes in digital notebooks and annotate imported PDF documents. You can organize information in GoodNotes in notebooks, documents, or folders. Now, I did have to pay $30, which is a one-time payment in order to use the app. Um, if you do wanna use the app without a subscription, your usage is limited to three notebooks and audio recording is limited to 20 minutes per notebook. But I feel like the amount is worth it, uh, especially if you're a student and you like to take notes. I normally use it to track my goals each year. As you can see, I have my 2024 annual planner. You can use the app for note taking, like I said before, you can create notebooks and journals for studying or use it as a daily journal. You can draw, you can edit PDFs. They do have something called a marketplace where you can purchase templates and there's some free templates as well. Um, I've never purchased a template. I normally create documents in Canva, which I'll be discussing later on, export it and then import it into GoodNotes. So another app I like to use is called Notion. It's available as a web application with free and paid subscription options, or you can download the app in App Store. But it's another note-taking and productivity app that allows people to organize their thoughts, manage projects, and run a business. So for the note-taking aspect, you can create private pages for lists, thoughts, you can create diary entries, or share pages for collaboration with others. For project management, you can break down projects, visualize it, filter, sort, create labels. And just like GoodNotes, Notion does offer templates that you can purchase, or you can just type into Google free Notion templates and you can find some there. You can also customize your Notion dashboard with plenty of integrations. You can integrate it with Asana. pictures um, I like to create collages I know some people have thumbnails where it's just one image I like to use multiple images I am on the free version because you guys know I really don't like to pay for too much but it's a great tool to use and they have a lot of AI powered features so this next app is a must if you are a youtuber or wanting to become a youtuber YouTube studio 
is a tool within YouTube that allows users and creators to manage their channels, edit and monitor the performance of their videos and view and reply to comments on their videos. I am on YouTube Studio at least three or four times each week. Moving on to the game section, offline games is a must for me because I travel often. And of course, there is no connection on the plane, you're on airplane mode. And if I'm on international flights, normally they do provide games and movies and TV shows. Other times, if I'm on like a four or five hour flight within the US, they don't provide that. So I like to download some offline games to play just to keep me occupied and busy throughout the flight. Now this app, I've talked to you guys about a lot in the beginning of this video, but Pinterest is one of my favorite apps. If you don't know, Pinterest is a platform where users can search, save, and shop ideas by pinning images and videos to their digital boards. You can find inspiration on topics like recipes, home decor, fashion, DIY projects, and much more. Um, I like to use Pinterest. If I go to a nail salon and I am trying to get some inspiration, I can look up like nail inspo ideas, outfits, the same thing. If I'm going to an event and I can't figure out an outfit, I'll put it into um, Pinterest or let's just say I have black pants and I don't know what shirt to wear or blouse to wear with the black pants. I'll put in black pants outfit ideas. So this app really does not need an explanation. Almost everyone uses Netflix nowadays, but I like to use it on flights. Sometimes I don't like the movies or TV show options on my international flights. I'm talking about flights that are like nine plus hours and I need a movie or two to keep me occupied. So the day before my flight, I normally go through Netflix, try to find a movie or two that I'm interested in, and then I'll download it so that I can watch it on my flight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this iPad tour and it gave you some ideas on how to customize your iPad. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!